the African and Oriental Travel Company's video channel. As you can see for the next few weeks, we don't think we're going to be going anywhere. What we'd like to do is bring you a few highlights of the places we've seen around the world. Good afternoon everybody and welcome to the African and Oriental Travel Company's video channel. Today we're going to discuss the thorny question of what camera do I take when I'm out on safari? There are so many answers to this question, but what I'm going to do is address it from a personal point of view, what I believe is correct and what has worked for me. Now there's an awful lot of people out there that say that you need a 500 millimetre f4 lens and you've got to have full frame cameras and you've got to have this, this and this, and that's all very valid. None of that is bad advice. But not all of us have got 25 to 30,000 pounds or dollars to spend. So most of us have a DSLR. I happen to prefer the D7500. It's got a 20 megapixel sensor. It's quite small in the hand. It's not stupidly heavy, but it's not ridiculously light. And it takes that brilliant battery, okay, the ENEL15, I think it's called. That's a, a genuine Nikon one there. The ENEL15. And this battery gives you about, oh, they say about 900 shots. I find in extremely cold weather that drops down to about six. But you really want to have a camera with a decent sized battery. The second thing you need to consider is the sensor. A lot of people will tell you that you need to have a full frame sensor for Safari to take in the wide open landscapes. That's great, there's nothing wrong with a full frame sensor, but it's rubbish, you don't need one. I have a Nikon D800, which is sitting behind me in a cupboard. I'm not gonna get it out because it's irrelevant for this program. That has a 36 megapixel sensor, full frame. The 7500 has a 20 megapixel sensor. And as I said before, people ask, is that good enough? And the answer is an emphatic yes. My 20 megapixel sensor blows up enormous photographs which are in our flat okay so uh, i will show you some of those the 20 megapixel sensor has the added benefit of being able to focus extremely quickly and it works very well in low light so now we've got away from the is my sensor big enough question we come to the actual camera itself the 7500 is the first of the Nikons in my opinion that is actually ergonomic I don't have tiny hands I don't have massive hands either but this grip here used to always be of an odd shape this one works perfectly for me it's got those standard Nikon wheels where you press the button and rotate Okay, back to the old film days. And then also, in my opinion, for safari photography, and this is where I hate to say this because I'm not a brand person, where Nikon beats Canon. And there are many ways that Canon beat Nikon, but in this particular case, it's the two wheels. Forward wheel, rear wheel. It is an intuitive way of using thumb and forefinger, whereas Canon has you using your thumb down here, which means you take your eye away from the picture. This way you put it up against your eye and you can see all the displays. I'm not going to go into this camera in a review session. I'm not going to start talking about folding screens and bits and pieces and so on, because that's not relevant. The most relevant thing for you is, does the camera have the power to take a photograph that you can turn into a billboard? Is the camera light enough? And is the camera powerful enough? Does it have enough weatherproofness which quite frankly is a misnomer because if it's pissing with rain, you've got to have a, a cover or a plastic bag or an Evo Marine bag or something. Um, and the answer is yes, yes, and yes. It's light enough, it's powerful enough, and it's got a good battery. It's auto-focusing is supremely fast. Um, yes, the I think the Nikon D500 has faster focusing, but you know what? I'm on Safari every year. Um, I'm on safari, I'm in Africa for months every year, and this is the camera that I, I lug around with me. And you know what? It focuses fast enough. It's, this, this particular camera has been down to Antarctica, it's been to Tanzania, it's been to Namibia, Zambia, Zimbabwe, uh, St. Helena, South Africa, I mean, you know, Kenya. It, it's, it's literally, the only place it hasn't been to is Malawi.
That's my one missing link, you know. Um, and it, it's producing photographs that I'm publishing in, in print magazines, online magazines, and I'm blowing up three foot, four foot by whatever um, for my house. And I'm blowing up, uh, you know, um, 12 feet by whatever for the trade shows. Yes, I mean, this is, the, this is what takes the photographs for trade shows, for the big banners that we use. So... Yeah, I mean, if you're not going to, you know, I'm pretty confident with Photoshop, I can blow these up to the size of a billboard. So let's just throw that one out the window. The D7500. Okay, lenses. Now, this is the thorny issue because a long time ago, an Agence France press photographer, an associate press photographer and myself were all sitting down and we had a discussion and, the, <laughs> and we were all talking about cameras and you know being thumped over the head by African policemen in Ethiopia trying to take a picture and you know and at the end of the day the AP man just turned around and said Raf the money's in the glass and he was a hundred percent correct the money is in the glass you need to have decent lenses okay so what I have found works absolutely perfectly for me on this crop frame sensor camera is the Nikon and I'm sure you delightful American friends, friends call it Nikon, but the Japanese call it Nikon, so I call it Nikon. And this is the 70 to 300 f4.5 to 5.6, okay? And it's an ED lens, which means extre uh, extra dispersion or extreme dispersion, I have no idea. Um, and it's got VR, which is really quite important when you're in shooting in low light. The whole thing is made in Thailand, it's not made in China. They're available secondhand for about, I don't know, 250 to sort of 500, excuse me, 250 to 350 pounds. Okay, they're available brand new for about 500 pounds. Um, you can probably transpose that into US dollars and be in a similar ballpark because we get stiffed in this country. So it's made in Thailand. It's a high quality lens. It's got uh, uh, vibration reduction and it's got different types of autofocus here. More importantly, when you're taking a photograph of a small bird behind a twig and the autofocus of your camera cannot keep up, you have a manual override. You can just ever so slightly tweak it to get that twig out of focus and get the bird in focus or the lion's eye. The next thing about this lens is it's not very big. Okay. Just to give you an exact measurement, that's my hand. It's about the length of my hand from fingertip to wrist. It's also not heavy at all. It's quite a light lens, but it's not a completely um, uh, soft sort of kit lens. It's, a, it's an extremely sharp lens. It's got an ultrasonic motor, so it photo auto focuses with this camera extremely quickly. The 300 mil equates approximately to 450 millimeters in traditional 35 millimeter speak. And that's a heck of a distance to get out there. That's a really good telephoto lens at f5.6. Yes, 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 you could have a 300 millimeter f4. I have one, I cannot carry it and a bunch of other lenses on safari and still get away with my hand luggage allowance, okay? Yeah, I suppose I could if I carry two handbags, you fly British Airways, you get two handbags, you carry them and then you're in the middle of Africa with this never ending problem of having a bag that's breaking your shoulder and you're wondering if someone's gonna pinch something, it's just never ending. So, this lens is absolutely perfect. It's absolutely fantastic for your needs. Yes, a prime lens will be better. How much better? I don't know, 10%, 15% of visual ability to see? Okay, I am one of those few people that actually does blow up my images. I do pixel peep, okay? I, I hate it, but I do it, but I have to, to see something. And you know what? The difference between this lens and a Prime 300 is not that great. Yes, there will be purists out there who argue me and go, you're talking rubbish. And yes, of course, they're right, because it is different. But is it that different? No. Sorry. We've discussed the... Uh, 70 to 300 millimeter VR zoom. The next thing we talk about is your standard zoom. I searched for years for a truly high quality zoom lens for crop frame Nikon. They just didn't have one. Canon was so far ahead of the game. And then I was in Bangkok and I was having a chat with a Photoshop owner who was absolutely lovely. And he turned around and I said to him, look, what's the best camera for a Nick? I've got this D7500 and I'm using kit lenses or I'm using full frame top end lenses. I said, you know, either they're too, too telephoto or that, you know, the quality is just not there. And you know that quality means a lot to me. 
And he said to me, what you need is a 16 to 80, uh, F, F uh, 2.8 to 4.5. And I said, yeah, yeah, F4, sorry. I said, yeah, yeah, rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. And I bought this second hand in Bangkok for 500 pounds. They sell for about 900 pounds in the UK. This lens is the game changer. OK, mm. they say it's got nanocrystal glass, which is, you know, Nikon's uh, version, ED nanocrystal. In my opinion, to an extent, that's marketing. But to an extent, it also means they put the money into this lens. And that means that this lens here is of extremely high quality. Is there some distortion on it? Yes, there's a little bit of distortion. Can you correct it? At super wide angle, can you correct it in Lightroom? Yes, you can correct it in Lightroom. But on Safari, um, nine, nine of your 10 shots will be shot on about 35 millimeter because they're going to be 50 millimeter equivalent. Uh, they're going to be landscape photographs or the stunning landscapes, or they're going to be 80 mil zooming in on an animal that's really quite close, but too close for the 70 to 300. This lens here is absolutely fantastic. It is the game changer, it is superb. So you now have a set, a kit, which where you can go from, uh, in 35 millimeter speak, 24 to 450 millimeter. You've, you've got the most fantastic safari camera gear, which you can hold in, you know, in literally two hands like that. You hold it in one hand, you have big enough hands, all right? And it's lightweight. I mean, you can, you know, I, I wrap these up in these neoprene pouches. I mean, the, the, this, the 300 mil just goes straight into this neoprene pouch that I think I paid about five pounds for, or eight pounds for on e eBay or Amazon or something. And it just goes in there and the neoprene's pretty cool. And if you're a bit worried, you put a bit more neoprene in the bottom and you bunch the top up like this. So that protects it from the top. This thing's been around the world. In my, in my standard backpack. Um, I also use an exactly similar neoprene pouch. This one is made by um, Flex Armor. Again, I probably bought it online. I have quite a few of these things. This one, the beauty about this one is that it does cover the Nikon D7500 beautifully with Velcro at the bottom with that lens. And actually when the lens hood's on, which I've broken, I'm waiting for a new one from Japan. That's it, that's your entire Safari camera outfit. The one addition I would make is a spare battery. You do not want to be in the position of uh, needing more power and running out when you're looking at lines uh, which are either mating or, you know, dare I say, bringing down a zebra. The other question that comes up about the D7500 is video. How good is the video? Um. It's not often that you see that many lions, five adults and five cubs, 10 lions in total. And the answer for that one is actually quite simple. It's excellent video. It's absolutely first class. The only minor problem with it is that obviously because it's got the, uh, the mirror viewfinder, you have to turn it on and use the rear viewfinder. And then what you do is you set this to camera or video. Okay, quality of video is first class. Now, obviously, here, yeah, you've got to do it like this because otherwise I'm pointing at a blue table and we don't want to do that. So the video quality is fantastic. The only negative aspect of the video is this, is that you zoom in with whatever lens you've got and then you sort of have to sort of press the button here to autofocus. And people have complained that the autofocusing on a, a DSLR, digital sort of single lens reflex, is not as good as a mirror camera. And the obvious answer is, of course it isn't, because with a mirror camera, like a, a Sony A6000, which has exactly the same or very similar sensor, everything up here, the gubbins up here, is electronic. So you can look through here, even in bright light, and you can compose, and it focuses just as fast as it would if you were taking still photographs. With the DSLR, you are reliant on the rear screen. The old D7100, which I have, and to an extent the Nikon D800, which I also have, both do not focus particularly quickly or well. Now, the easy way around that is you focus on the animal through the viewfinder with the press the button. When you're in focus, because generally you're going to be videoing some activity that's going on, quickly put on the screen 
and start videoing. And they've got a wonderfully easy button here, that little red button there. You just press that button and you're videoing. So the quality of video is very, very good. It's not, uh, to the best of my knowledge, it's not 4K video, but it's um, about 3,000 pixels wide. It's absolutely amazing. I find it's perfectly good for everything I need to use it for. Uh, I'm not broadcasting it for BBC Wildlife. I'm not a wildlife videographer. I, uh, I do, however, take photographs, as I told you before, for magazines, websites, um, my own wall, and uh, huge banners for trade shows. And this camera is more than adequate for that. It's more than adequate for all the video applications that I ever use it for. You just have to understand the limitations of a single lens reflex. Now, the next thing people want to talk about is why don't I buy a mirror camera? And, well, I'm a bad person to ask because I already have mirror cameras. I have a pair of uh, Sony uh, A6000s, which are old, and they work absolutely beautifully. The problem with the A6000 compared to the Nikon is that it hasn't got the weather sealing. These things, there's rubber, little rubber, little O-ringettes here and so on, and it's all very carefully done. Um, this battery compartment is, is, is actually got an O-ring in the battery compartment there. I can feel it with my finger. The lenses are fairly solid. The lenses are fairly, as long as you buy, you know, the good Nikon Nikkor, which we discussed yesterday, you know, made in Thailand. Not the cheap Chinese stuff. Well, there's a lot of good Chinese stuff out there. Just, uh, I just don't, uh, don't buy it. But anyway, the long and the short of it is this. is You've got your, um, yeah, yeah, weather sealing. All these, 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 uh, sections here, these caps, they're all basically plastified or rubberified, and you can actually feel, as like, if you listen carefully, you heard that, that little, <laughs> as it comes off from, the, you can actually see the O-ring in that one there. So this camera has weather sealing, so if you're going to go somewhere arduous, dusty, filthy, dirty, um, and, uh, you know, dangerous or whatever, or bad, if you're going to go somewhere filthy, dirty, dusty, mountainous, or uh, close to the sea or in rain, then the Nikon D7500 is a superb camera. It's a superb camera for what it is, for that job there. And again, couple this up with the 70-300 to 300, uh, Nikon Nikkor uh, F4.5 to 5.6, and you've got a fantastic combination for arduous and rugged places. I know this because I recently travelled throughout, throughout Africa with my uh, Sony A6000s and they worked perfectly, but I had to look after them. I really had to take care of them in the wind and the weather. Now, is that the be all and the end all? No, it's not. I have one more thing to add to this. As I said, I'm not a brand man. The Canon G9X Mark II is absolutely amazing. It slips into your pocket. So when you're walking around a city, like Tanzania, Dar es Salaam, Nairobi, Kenya, and you're with your guy, but you do not want to be pulling out a uh, single lens reflex camera, a big one, and I consider these big. This thing is smaller than your telephone, and it produces image quality that, again, you can put into magazines. I have published articles and used images taken with the G9X Mark II. Apparently, I think it has a 20 megapixel sensor or something. I have no idea. I've never bothered to look. It comes with these Canon batteries. Always try and buy the genuine ones because in cold weather, they last a lot longer. This particular camera replaces the one that I destroyed, uh, which I destroyed in a Land Rover. As you can see, I'm incapable of putting the battery back in again. I destroyed the other one in a Land Rover because I left it in the bottom of my Land Rover by mistake and it rained all winter. And the, I went to Tanzania, came back again and the other one was destroyed. So I bought this second hand from a friend of mine. Uh, they're available on eBay for about 250 pounds second hand. So, pricing, brand new pricing, brand new. Just say so you wanna get into this brand new. The 16 to 80, about 950 pounds. Camera, 600. New batteries, about 40. This lens here is, in its old version, is 450 pounds. 
you can get the newer version, which is supposed to be all singing and all dancing, but I personally wouldn't bother. I prefer the old manual focus override, but that's just me. I don't think the glass makes a difference. And these things are a hefty 400 pounds brand new, and they may well be replaced at some point, but who knows? So when it comes to Safari cameras, just to recap this, 70 to 300, Nikon Nickel VR ED. Nikon D7500 with the 18, sorry, 16 to 80, f2.8 to 4. Canon G9X Mark II and a spare battery. Take that with you and an iPad and a card reader and you are good to go. You can travel around the world. And when I say safari, I don't just mean Africa. This is a great combination to take up the Himalayas with you. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave your comments below. I'll try and answer each individual one of them. And watch out for new videos. I hate saying the word subscribe, so I'm not going to ask you to. Just uh, come back to our channel now and again.